I'm Ashley Kyle. And I'm Bob Spicer. And this is your Lake of the Ozarks News Update brought to you by Lake TV and LakeExpo.com and sponsored by Old Kinderhook Golf Resort and Yacht Club Power Sports. And today we're going to be talking about 911 calls and personal privacy. Some big changes in store for a local community group. Whatever happened with the gathering of the Juggalos? A preview of the shootout and lots more. All that after a word from Old Kinderhook. Old Kinderhook at Lake of the Ozarks has everything for your getaway in one convenient location. Featuring a Tom Weisskopf designed golf course. The Trophy Room offers a unique dining experience with an amazing view serving breakfast, lunch and casual dining. Old Kinderhook is your perfect stay and play destination, offering nightly and weekly accommodations, marina facilities, a luxurious spa and an event space to host a variety of different occasions. Discover your place at the lake, call for 2014 rates and information or visit us online. New technology for 911 dispatchers in Camden County could be a major stride for emergency responders, but some are worried that it could also be a threat to privacy. Until recently, 911 calls from a cell phone did not provide dispatchers with caller ID or a way to call the person back if they were disconnected. The new computer-aided dispatch program solves that problem, but the American Civil Liberties Union has been sounding the alarm as these systems are introduced across the country. The ACLU says the GPS technology is a threat to personal privacy and points to the ongoing track of cell phone activity by the federal government and National Security Agency. The Missouri Electronic Data Amendment 9 on this week's ballot is an attempt to address some of those concerns. It's not just your grandfather's VFW anymore in Camdenton. The local Post 5923 is growing with plans for a new kitchen and bar area. The leadership hopes will bring even more younger volunteers and veterans to connect with each other in their community. Senior Vice Commander Ross Reinhardt says the new facility will be a community center with more spaces for people to meet and have some fun. The Camdenton VFW is involved in the community through a variety of events like fundraisers, including a car show coming up on August 30th. For more information about the local post, just visit lakevfw.org. And speaking of veterans, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has announced new grants to help veterans and minorities get started in farming and ranching. More than $9 million has been made available for outreach and technical assistance for those groups. According to a 2012 agricultural census, 22% of farmers had only been farming for 10 years or less. The gathering of the Juggalos came and went, and Lake residents are left to wonder whether or not they were better off without it. The annual concert for the hip-hop band Insane Clown Posse has developed a reputation for unruliness, and the event nearly came to the lake area until local pushback led the band to relocate. This year's concert was moved to Thornville, Ohio, and local businesses there reported mainly positive experience with a noticeable boost in revenue. A few incidents did occur, including some graffiti in a gas station bathroom. <laughs> Law enforcement also reported the death of one woman who sought medical attention at a local hospital. Her family says she had a prior medical condition and that investigation is ongoing. A local networking group has brought in the big bucks this year. The BNI Buccaneers, part of Business Networking International, have closed $22 million in the last 10 months as a result of member referrals. The Bucks is one of several local BNI groups and meets every Wednesday morning in Sunrise Beach. The chapter began with six members in 2011 and has grown to more than 40 members in three years. Just a few days before the August 5th elections, a supporter of presiding commissioner Chris Franken filed an ethics complaint against the Lake Area Conservative Club. Kim Crosstu filed the complaint to the Missouri Ethics Commission on July 31st, accusing the club of donating more than $500 to commissioner candidate Greg Hasty without registering as a political action committee. However, club president Nancy Stewart argued the complaint was nothing more than a political stunt. Stewart said the Ethics Commission has already told her, based on her explanation of the club's involvement with Hasty. The complaint doesn't have legs to stand on. Last week, Lake of the Ozark Shootout Committee announced that seven people will be inducted into the Shootout Hall of Fame this year. On the list are Bill Siebold, Bill Swineberg, Brad Smith, Diana Dorhauer, Ed Hancock, Leo Case, and Scott Post. The Hall of Fame was unveiled in 2013 and honors individuals who have made major contributions to the event's success. They'll be honored at a Hall of Fame dinner at Cannon Smoke Saloon on August 21st. The races will begin two days later on August 23rd and 24th. 
And on that topic, the Missouri Water Patrol is reminding boaters to remember the no wake zone that will be set up for the shootout races. That zone will extend from the 31.5 mile marker to the 36 mile marker beginning 30 minutes before the race and ending 30 minutes after. Now the best solution is to just join up with the shootouts mile long flotilla and enjoy watching some of the fastest boats in the world. Okay, next we'll take a look at some events coming to the lake this weekend, but here's a word from Yacht Club Power Sports. Things are looking up. Things are looking up at Yacht Club Power Sports. On the water, in the woods, or on the streets. At Yacht Club Power Sports, we have your ticket to ride. Like an awesome lineup of Can-Am ATVs and side-by-sides. The Can-Am Maverick Max can tear up the trail or you can make your own trail. Come into Yacht Club Power Sports and check out the all-new Sea-Doo Spark. Things are looking up at Yacht Club Power Sports in Osage Beach, under the big red sign in front of High V. Yacht Club Power Sports, where the fun begins and never ends. There's another boat race this weekend, but it will be at a different place. The first annual Stand Up Paddle Sprint Race is scheduled for this Sunday, August 10th at 4 p.m. at Frankie and Louie's in Sunrise Beach. The race is 1,000 yards and groups are encouraged to create four-person teams to compete. Early registration is $20 and it's $25 if you register the day of the event. Fundraised by the race will benefit the Staff Animal Rescue. Did you know it's National Farmers Market Week? Well, make sure you check out one of the many farmers markets around the lake area. There were sales markets on Friday evening and there were markets in Osage Beach, Eldon, Camdenton and Greenview on Saturday mornings. There's a special guest coming to the Main Street Music Hall this week. Comedian Matt Gum will join the regular cast on Thursday night for the Reeling in the Air show. With music from the 60s, 70s and 80s. Check out lakemusichall.com for tickets and more information. Friday evening, the church at Osage Hills will host a Buddy Pack 1K, 5K, and 10K. The races will begin and benefit the Lake Area Buddy Pack program, which sends food home from school with local kids who might otherwise go hungry for dinner. The event begins at 6.45 p.m. Hot summer nights are back, and on Friday night, motorists will cruise the Bagnell Dam Strip from 6 to 11 p.m. It's a family-friendly event, and there's plenty to do even before the fireworks begin down by the dam at 9.45. The Mid-Missouri Wine and Brew Festival is coming to the Country Club Hotel Saturday. Admission is 15 bucks. That includes a souvenir wine glass, plenty of wine and beer tastings. The festival runs from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. This has been your Lake of the Ozarks News Update. I'm Ashley Kyle. And I'm Bob Spicer. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.